I'm super excited to have Dave Hill Jr. on. Um, this is going to be a really special and unique interview because Dave is going to sing for us a couple of songs. And I have I don't remember the last time I've interviewed someone who, you know, graced me with actual, you know, singing that like when they try to do an entire song if possible, at least. And on, and then talk about the journey that that led him here um, and his new book. I'm really excited to share to, for him to talk about it as well. Uh, so Great. without further ado, Dave, welcome to this interview. Thank you for doing this. And I would love for you to first just intro yourself however you want to tell us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell us about your background a bit and, and what you're doing now. You got it. Thank you, George. And thanks for having me. It's uh it's a real honor for me to be on your program. I just appreciate so much what you do for the community and for people like myself and, and others. And I've met some great people through you and learned a lot. So, uh, so thank you. Um, so yeah, so about me, I, how I got here, uh, I started out as a musician and lo and behold, I'm still a musician and now a songwriter, but, uh, my journey took many, uh, valleys and vistas and I, was an executive at two high-tech startup companies that I didn't know what a startup was when I joined the first one. And I was a marketing director and then a managing director for a company called Ableton. They're based in Berlin. They're a very popular digital audio workstation manufacturer. I was there eight years and then went to Isotope, uh, did a similar, about five years or so, an audio software plugin company. I was a VP of sales and marketing there. And while very successful, I was also incredibly uh, burnt out, having trouble seeing up from down, trying to really get my bearings. And luckily, the CEO at Isotope was a really uh, informed guy, and he started. He was working with a great coach who I worked with for a time, and then I worked with another coach. And then once I got turned on to coaching, I was like, "Oh, this is what my heart is really calling for." And so. I became a coach because I needed a coach, you know, I say. So, uh, yeah, and then that, I guess, I could go on just a little bit more that uh, what happened to me as I became a coach is you do a lot of work on yourself through coaching process. I trained at a company called Integral Coaching Canada. I, I have a master coaching certification there, and then I've, I've done other trainings and whatnot. And through all that process, you do a lot of introspection. You get coached. You... Um, look at a lot of things and I think so through there I, I really started to get back to sound and music as being like a central theme for me and I even play around with calling myself uh, a musical healer uh, so I'm an executive coach and a musical healer for healing myself and also working with sound and music with others as well because I find it's just such a powerful medium to play and uh, use our imaginations for growth that's awesome and you are a legit musician because I see the ceiling yeah. tiles, the sound tiles, right. those uh, absorb sound. And so makes it. Um, OK, so I have questions for you, but I wonder, would this be a good time to introduce one of the songs? Uh, we could. Or, we could. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe let's, be, let's get right into it. Right? Let's get right into it. And then yeah. we'll talk some and then we'll do another yeah. song. How's that? Right. Yeah. So. Um, Great. So this, I was thinking about which songs to choose, and I felt like um, I wanted to do something with a little bit of meaning for our talk. And so this song is called The Song I'm Afraid to Write. And it was a song that I wrote near the beginning. It wasn't actually the first, but it was a, among the early sort of ideas I had. And it was, I was really right up against it. I was working on my own and uh, working with a, a friend trying to help me write some songs, and I met these two guys, uh, Isaac and Torald Corin. They're called the Corin Brothers, or Brothers Corin, and did a songwriting program with them, and it really started to, all of a sudden, the floodgates came open, and it started to be, it's a very personal song. It's about a lot of things that happened in my own blocks about coming to allow myself to write a song that I thought that was, a song, I thought songwriting was this black box you couldn't possibly enter. I've, I've been a drummer for 40 years, but for some reason I felt like songwriting was beyond that. So this is called The Song I'm Afraid to Write. Take a quick sip of water. Yeah, and also um, we, before we started recording, you had shown me the Zoom yeah. setting 
for oh, yeah. um for allowing it. But you, you I realize you don't have to show that to us. You can do a separate video about that some other time if you want yeah, to. Yeah, I'm happy to but, just explain. I'm using the original sound for musicians feature and, on uh, Zoom. That's important because otherwise if one if the, the sound doesn't come great. But okay. I'm gonna mute myself and allow you okay, yeah. to, to sing for us. Okay, great. Thanks, George. This is the song I'm afraid to write It might wake the dead and maybe they were right This is the dream I've never had before I was safe and alone Too much to ignore Maybe they were right What if they were right? This is the day they won't let me sing. I'm locked away and the warden is listening. This is the song I can never release. Demons at the gate who I can never please. What if they were right? Maybe they are right. song in the absence of light a bar fly in a teacup a husband without a wife this is the song that saved my life when I was free from being bitter and being chased by a knife but I hear there's another sign There's another side Gotta get to the other side Will they hear my song on the other side? Will they speak? in tongues on the other side and I'm not the only one on the other side on the other <laughs> awesome wow that is that is haunting and uh there's a lot of meaning behind it i um, yeah. want to hear the story um so did you did you yeah. do the music production side yeah. and all of it yeah yeah, it's awesome. I, yeah that's kind of my luckily that was my day job for a lot of it but i wow he's been an audio software uh, guy i used to write for a bunch of music magazines and do software yeah. reviews back before i ever got in the tech world uh -huh. as, a, uh -huh. as a writer and a musician and, yeah and then i i'm a drummer but sort of interesting so i'm programming electric drums sometimes and then i'm electronic drums and then i'm sometimes playing right keyboards more and more that's kind of my my side hobby i guess yeah yeah that's, that's singing and um, it all kind of works you know symbiotically mm -hmm. together it's like uh you know as, yeah. as i become a better singer i become a better songwriter and pianist. Yeah. they all kind yeah. of kind of build up one another so, and it's so Tell us about the meaning meaning of that song. Uh, I mean, I think we can interpret it in our own ways, but I yeah. want to hear, hear from you. Right. Well, I mean, it's it's super personal. There's there's a whole bunch of things in there, but I think yeah. you know, what what you should know is that um, I didn't feel it was okay 
to write a song for some reason, and it felt like there were things that just felt, you know, like I wasn't worthy somehow, and I felt blocked, and uh, a lot of it, I mean, it kind of dovetails a bit into my book, and I was working a lot with inner critic, um, working against the inner critic, and sort of frustrated by the inner critic, and uh, because I was a musician, and I've been a musician for so long, I've, you know, I've pretty developed tastes at this point, you know, I've played I don't know, countless, hundreds of gigs at this point with, as a drummer, toured and done all sorts of things. And uh, so then when I came to write my own song, I just, you know, I'd compare myself right away with the people that, you know, have been doing this for a long time. And as they say, you know, comparing your first step with somebody's 500th step is about as painful as you can get, you know, and that, that's what was happening. So, I, and it didn't really click to me until I was done with the book that actually I was sort of, my songwriting journey was really a classic, proof case for my book. It wasn't, the book was really more from my coaching work of learning to trust my voice as a coach, trust my intuition. And, and yeah, so in a circular way, I guess this, um, this song's really about release and being free from being mm. bitter. Free from the, and the book, I want to make sure people know the, the name of the yeah. book. You can, you can find the, the link below, but Hold it's it called Doubt. There we go. I Doubt Writing know. Shotgun. Yeah. Learning to recognize, engage, and love your doubt, yeah. and uh, yeah, so I I love it, and uh, I have it I have it as well in my in my Kindle anyway. Yeah. Um. Thanks. Okay. A great review. So. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. My first review. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. So okay, I, I want to ask you about um your your coaching ex your coaching training actually. So you went you got integral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Integral coaching. Does that yeah. related? Is that related to the integral Ken Wilber integral? It is, yeah, a bit. It's not like he doesn't teach there. Or no, 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 no. But but it's but, uh, it's related yes, to that it, framework. It's related to integral theory and yeah. using those frameworks. And nice. the idea is that we we use those lenses as we are sort of evaluating clients and just to really, I mean, in the end, it's all in service of the client and helping them land, uh, helping you uh, create the right coaching program for them that's going to really resonate and land for them because yeah, we all have bias, we all have blind totally. spots. Me too. For those who don't aren't super familiar with integral can you give us your summary of it <laughs> that's a tall order i know but it's a tall order yeah well i mean i think you know ken wilber has you know i i think he's sort of the the godfather of the of the theory i, I think but uh, as far as i know there are other strong voices there too and it's honestly it's a little bit faded out like i don't hear as much about it as i used to a decade ago but i what I would say is there's certain ways we orient. There are certain tendencies that we have based on, you know, our personality and our, our culture and our, our level of consciousness even. And um, kind of heady things, honestly. But, but uh, through my, you know, honestly, using my intuition, I kind of roughly assess a client where they are. And I'm often wrong, and that's okay. But because I have the framework, I'm able to adapt and kind of find out, you know, let's say, so like one popular part of the integral model is the four quadrant model where there's a upper left, up, upper right, lower right, lower left. And so it's like how you might orient. So for instance, upper left would mean that you're making a lot, it's very um, like, like uh, personal, like it's the me basically, it's like I'm making meaning in the world based on what's important to me. And if I don't get it, if I'm not, uh, you know, it's very subjective, and, and it's very personal. And if I don't get it, then forget it. I'm not moving forward. Whereas if you're a lower left, for instance, which happens to be my orientation, it's more about the group. So, like, is the group aligned? Do we have a shared value, shared meaning? And that's more important than just the me. Like, if I'm, I may feel something strong, but if the group doesn't feel like moving forward, then we might not move forward. There's other, you know, we could go on, the, you know, the, well, the upper right quarter, just, I guess, since I'm this deep, is about action. So it's about measuring, like, I, I just look for, you know, they're the doing, they're the external uh, doing activity. So somebody who, like, I just start, start getting things done, and then I know that I'm actually, that's how I'm making meaning in the world, or how I know which direction to follow. And then the lower right is somebody who needs the system, or the framework, or the, the map. So, you know, some people say, I'm not getting out of bed in the morning until I have the list and I know exactly where everything fits and what's going to happen. And so you can imagine with just those four types, it's just one lens of the, I think, seven or eight that I learned. 
uh, that lens is very different. You know, if you're working with someone who's very action-oriented, let's say, and you start trying to get them to care about the group shared meaning, they're like, you know, what does it matter? You know, they, they, don't, they can't see it. So I need to be able to put my coaching program uh, and, and speak to them, and even the way I might do a write-up or, or even ask a question, I'm ideally holding that quadrant, in my view, gently so that I'm able to ask a question that they really can speak to. So wow, this is there. really yeah. good. Uh, I actually haven't... Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does make sense. And um, it gives me a re renewed appreciation for Integral. Um, cool. And I just, I love that you're bringing that, those leads lenses into your coaching. That's really powerful stuff. Yeah. It's really, um, yeah. it's holistic and it's also tailored mm -hmm. to each individual. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah. mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's amazing. That's really awesome. I, I'm, I'm happy you're doing that. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I know the time is already coming really short. Yeah, so okay. I wonder um, if you could do part of a second song. Okay, sure. And then I want we I want to I have another question for you after that. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Let me see here. I think um, you know I'll do something a little a little more upbeat. Sure. But still a deep meaning. So yes. Uh, so my father passed away in 2019, mm -hmm. and it had a big impact on me. Uh, I definitely had learned a lot from him, and. Um, not, I'm saying upbeat, but I'm going to, here I am talking about death. Uh, but, you know, these songs are born from inspiration. So um, my dad was a big fisherman, and I fished with him sometimes. And uh, so this song's called Down River, and I'll just, I'll leave it at that and see if uh, maybe the words can, can speak to the meaning. Okay. And I'll just, I'll stop it at some point. I think there's a kind of a natural place uh, after like the second chorus or so. All right, this is called Down River. And you can mute, George, if you haven't already. It's in here. And in classic showbiz style, I start again. There's a cross at the bottom of a river. There's a man fishing upstream for the cross. There's a boy in a fishing hole Looking for his soul Saying, take my hand And help me get across There's a cross deep down river Take my hand Help me understand Help me understand Spirit is floating in the water. Is a dead man is walking for miles. I guess I'm a wandering child. Was born to be wild. Reaching out, take my hand and help me get across. Oh. There's a cross deep down river Take my hand, help me understand Down river, hand in hand Down river, I wanna understand I lost my step I think I slipped on a rock, man. Everybody's got an edge, and the river will know. I don't have time to hate you for it, but I'm not ready to let go. Everybody's got a line in the sand that's disappearing in time. You gave me hope when you offered your hand Now will you take mine? I'm not sure what you'll find Running out of time Down river, will we cross? Down river, let's get lost, hey! I'll, uh, I'll stop it there.
<laughs> Imagine an amazing solo and finish. Oh my gosh. And did you do all the music on this one as well? Uh, the guitar is a friend of mine, Jack. Ah, nice. Who has an amazing okay. name. And he's an amazing brother, friend of mine. Oh, so great. What a yeah. catchy song. I could totally imagine this being so much, uh, so much fun in a, like a live yeah. setting. You know? I'm singing them live and playing drums while I sing. I, I had a show the other day. So oh, wow. I play, out about, I play like once a month right now. With the wow. band. We have a band called uh, Greenwood Music Collective. Nice. It's greenwoodmusiccollective.com. And where, where are you guys playing? Like We play uh, in Seattle area. You Seattle know, area, nice. Two different venues, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Jack Quick, he's the primary songwriter. He okay. I mean, hundreds of songs, I think, at this point. Wow, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So he's been helping support me a bit. Yeah, yeah. it's so cool. So yeah. much fun, Thanks so much so fun. Much. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, tell us uh, what, if people want to work with you, um, you work with yeah. people in, in a couple of ways. Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, it's really, coaching is so... Uh, personal and it's really important that you feel good about the person that's coaching you and so I think it's really for me uh, it's a wide assortment of people when I look at the different uh, professions and you know it's always hard to niche we, we talked about this before George I've learned that from you as well that, that you're trying to say this is the exact right person but you know I coach a lot of different type of executives uh, usually in uh, technical type of uh, products, uh, but it's 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 all over the yeah, place, and I, I coach some creatives as well, artists, and um, and people struggling with their inner critic, and, and I think like you know it's safe to say, maybe this sounds funny from a man to say this, but a lot of my inner critic work, some of my most successful clients are women. Uh, I think that women are often dealing with an imposter syndrome that that can come up where they're they're really struggling to have their voice heard. And I think that I've been really effective and I have some great testimonials to that effect. And that's, that seems to be a sweet spot. I didn't really choose, but it seems I had a strong mother figure. And I think that that, uh, that maybe comes up a bit. And, and if you read my book, maybe that would also uh, land for you. But yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's Absolutely. great, man. So Love reach it. out. Dave, oh, DaveHillJr.com is my site. It's pretty easy. Yeah. To yeah I'll, put, I'll put that I'll below. Put that the, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Dave, it's been such a pleasure. Oh, thank, you, uh, thank you for mine. thank you for doing this. What an honor! And Amazing. the first, the first uh, of, before. yeah, the first of hopefully many, right? Yeah, that that absolutely. you'll be doing. Yeah, 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 hope yeah, so. yeah. So, okay. all right. Have a wonderful, uh, yeah, have a wonderful day. Thanks again for doing this.